Hey guys, today we're going to install PostgreSQL on a Raspberry Pi 4. So we're going to start out just saying sudo apt update, just to update our repo information, get the latest info about what packages are available. Then we're going to run sudo apt install PostgreSQL, that's the package name, and we're going to install it. And I sped this part up a lot, so um, this actually took a little while. But I'm um, not not too too long. But in any case, I sped it up a lot. This this went a whole lot faster. So, uh, in any case, um, I basically sped the video up. So we're gonna say system ATL check the status of the Postgres process. Now we're just gonna make sure we have it enabled and just you know go through the process of starting it up. So and here I did not run sudo, so it's asking for a password. So I'm gonna redo this and remember to type sudo this time just to make sure it's enabled. And we're just going to, you know, go ahead and make sure it's started up and check the status here. And now we are going to just actually verify that the uh, processes themselves are actually running. So we're just going to manually say PSEF grep dash I Postgres. And there we go. We see a bunch of Postgres processes. So now we're going to attempt to set up like a, you know some basic stuff like a user and a, a basic database. So we're going to sudo su to Postgres, and you know in the documentation it recommends running it just like that, not sudo su dash Postgres, um, no dash basically. I'm not sure how important that is though. So now we're going to go ahead and create a user. There we go. So we've created a Postgres user. We're going to exit out of there. And we're going to go ahead and use these uh, parameters to connect to the database. So go ahead and type our password in, and now we are connected to the database again. So we've connected from our regular user. Um, our regular login user to the database. Note that we've connected to the database server, but we haven't actually created a database yet. We're about to do that right here. And so now we're going to go ahead and create database test DB1. So that's our first initial database we're creating. Then we're going to connect to that database. And there we go. We are now connected to the database test DB1. So we're basically using that database. And now we're going to create table, table one, specify a couple columns. And then we are going to insert into table values, just insert some initial values just to have something in the database, basically to populate it. And so now we're going to query the data, database just to check that we can do that, just to kind of um, test it out. And so now we're going to show the location of the HBA file. Now this could be different depending on the, the version of Postgres that you have installed. So, um, you know, the version of the documentation might not match what's on your system. So it might be slightly different, you'll probably find it anyways, but uh, yeah, just show HBA file, we'll show you where this config file is located. And we are gonna go ahead and edit that file in a little bit. So exit out of the database connection. And we are gonna go ahead and check that that file exists. And we're gonna go ahead and edit it. All right, so from here, we are going to go ahead and, you know, scroll down to the bottom. And we're going to look at some of the existing entries. And notice we have a few different columns, um, you know, specifying things like what database you want to connect to, um, you know, what, what host, what, what user, and um, 
you know, you know, the, the address that you're allowed to connect on or that, that it's allowed to accept connections on and, and stuff like that. So we're going to copy an existing line and we're going to change the user to uh, our user. So the, the user that we just created will be allowed to make this type of connection. And we're going to change the interface to all interfaces, like actual interfaces listening on the inter on the network, rather than the local host. The the uh, lines above are configured for the local host. So 127.0.0.1 is local host. So now we're going to go ahead and edit this other config file. So postgresql.conf. So we're going to go down here to the bottom, or not, not, we're actually going to have to search for an item that we're looking for. So, yeah, search for listen, and you see this is commented out here. So you, you could uncomment it and edit it, but I'm just going to leave that, that entry there. And I, I basically copied the line, and I'm going to edit that line and uh, change the value to a, a basically a wild card, meaning that it will listen on any. Um, basically on any address, so any, any IP address on any interface on the entire system will be allowed to listen. So you'll be able to allow to listen for connections so we can connect on any actual interface. And the, the objective here with these two config files we're editing is to allow us to connect over the network. Now, if you only wanted to connect from an application locally on the on the local system that you're running this on, you know, don't make it available on the network. You, you're okay just connecting to the local host. Uh, but in any case, we, uh, you know, run sudo systemctl restart postgresql. Just restart it just to make sure. And so now we're gonna go ahead and try connecting with this command. You know, specifying the actual host and we are able to connect. So now we're going to run netstat naptl and check what is listening on the system currently. And we can see here we have Postgres listening, so listening on all interfaces on port 5432. <clears throat> so now we're going to go ahead and install uh, PG Admin. So this is a really popular administrative tool. So yeah, it's, it's actually already copying over, but I, I left that window open. This is you know where you install it on a Mac. So I'm basically going to be connecting to this using PG Admin on Mac OS, um, but with the PostgreSQL server is on my Raspberry Pi running Raspberry Pi OS, which is basically Linux. Which, which is Linux. So in any case, basically specify the host name and you know basically stick with that default port. Change the username. And let's see here. So I think we're probably just going to leave this as is and go ahead and save it. So unable to connect, I did something wrong here. I actually have to remember to put in the password. And there we go, we're connected. So we are now connected to the database. So from the system I'm connecting from, I'm, I'm connecting from a Mac. My desktop here in this video is a Mac. So I'm connecting from you know, a MacBook running Mac, Mac OS to a, uh, a uh, Postgres server running on Linux on a Raspberry Pi. So we're, we're basically just gonna poke around in the interface here a little bit, see some statistics, some, some processes, stuff like that. <clears throat> Bunch of different things we can look at, just poke around the UI, see what's available. see databases that exist there's the postgres database that that's uh, built in that comes with your installation and we see test db1 that's the database that i created you know we, we just created that just a little bit ago during the installation process we, we can see this uh, command here would allow us to recreate that that database if we wanted to 
can see some information about it. All sorts of things, extensions, triggers, so on and so forth. See the table space. All sorts of um, login groups and roles, stuff like that. You can see user one, the user that we created, and a bunch of built in stuff. properties for our database that we created there's a query tool that will allow us to run SQL queries so we can go ahead and just you know just as an example run show HBA file run it and there we go there's the output down at the bottom in this nice little grid so that's uh, somewhat useful so we can basically just directly query our, our database server so let's try selecting all from table all from table one run it there we go there's that data that uh, record that we inserted just as a test and yeah there's our data right there we can query it from the PG admin tool so basically kind of what you would expect to be able to do so go ahead and hit that like button and you're, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss out on all the great content we have coming up. We'll also have a lot of great content we've already put out. So you're going to want to go ahead and look at that history of videos that we have and um, make sure you also hit the bell icon. Otherwise, YouTube's not going to let you know when we do come out with a new video. And again, you're not, not going to want to miss some of the stuff we have coming up. So yeah, definitely subscribe, hit the bell icon, and more importantly, leave a comment down below. Not just for me, but for the next person who comes along and watches this video, they'll see your comments and be that much more informed. Um, if you know something I don't know, leave a comment down below. Any comments, questions, criticisms, whatever you want to say, we do want to hear it. So leave a comment down below. And um, as always, thanks for watching, and we will see you guys in the next video.